African American community, there's just a dearth of fathers. It's a tough day for fathers. Uh, um, the majority of African American households are headed by women. Uh, and, you know, it's just such a day that we see so many things and so many people have so many uh, opinions on what a father is. So, uh, Winston Webster, the preeminent lexicographer of our day, and Webster defines a father as a male parent, uh, a male ancestor, a person who has invented something or an originator. Uh, he also has this uh, father is called uh, creator, founder, or father of. Another uh, uh, another definition is even God himself. But I was just thinking a lot of the colloquial terms and phrases in the day that we live in for father. Uh, I've heard fathers uh, call uh, the procreator. Uh, I've, I've heard the old folks call a father a pair of, pra a pair of pants. Uh, in this new day, I've heard a father, uh, uh, you know, a pair of pants or a pair of britches, the old folks she was I've heard in this new day that a father's been called uh, my baby daddy. Or I, I even heard uh, a father call uh, in, in a horrible term for a church setting, but uh, it's the truth that some are just calling him the sperm donor. And, and we have so many uh, adverse, uh, adverse paintings of what a father is, so I thought there was nothing better that to go that we, as, as all the fathers that literally, uh, that there, in spite of all these negative things that are being said about fathers, in spite of so many people being separated from having a father in their home, despite even hearing the word father causing pain to so many people because they have literally went their whole lives without knowing who their father is, that I thought that we would take instructions for from the scriptures and talk about the father of light. And in James 1 and 17, it says, every good and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the father of light with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. I wanted to read James 1 verse 12 through 17 on this particular text talking about the Father of Lights from the Message Bible. And in the Message Bible, these words are recorded. Don't let anyone under pressure to give in to evil say God is trying to trip me up. Uh, we can't blame God when we're, when, when we're uh, submitting ourselves to sin or our lust overtake us. It goes on to say God is imp impervious to evil. That means that God can't put evil on. And he puts evil in no one's way. The temptation to give in to evil comes from us and only us. This is the, uh, in the message Bible, this is telling us that when we uh, want to submit to our lusts or our inclinations or our proclivities, that it comes from us and it doesn't come from God. He uh, goes on to say, we have no one to blame but the leering, seducing flare-up of our own lust. Lust gets pregnant and has a baby. Oh, I, I like this. It said that lust, whenever lust gets pregnant, it, it, it brings forth a baby, and that baby is called sin. Uh, and it said sin grows up to adulthood and becomes a real killer. Uh, goes on to say, so my very dear friends, don't get thrown off course. Every desirable and beneficial gift comes out of heaven. The gifts are rivers of light cascading down from the Father of light. There is nothing deceitful in God, nothing two-faced, nothing fickle. He brought us to this life using the true word, showing us off as the crown of all creatures. Basically what the writer is saying, and they did say in the message Bible, uh, that translation, and basically what the writer is saying in the Holy Writ is that God is a God that you can depend on. They're saying that God is the same God. They're saying that God is immutable. What the word immutable means is that God is one that is not subject to change. He's the only creature in all of our creations that is not subject to change. So when it says every good and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is 
no variableness. That word variableness means uh, if you uh, in a experiments are done every day and they're tested under different variables. Sometimes they're tested under heat. Sometimes they're tested under adverse cold. Sometimes they're tested uh, at this particular time, and sometimes they're tested at that. Uh, different variables literally produce different results, and that means being subject to change. But God, there's no variable that can be introduced into your reality or to mine or to the earth or to history itself that can change God. It's saying that God is the same God. Hebrews 13 and 8 says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. It is saying that your God is not subject to variableness. He's not wishy-washy. He's not an AC, BC God. That he's going to be the same God in the morning that he's going to be at night. That he's going to be the same God in the so-called recession uh, as he is when times are flourishing. That God is not subject to change. It's also saying that God is not subject to circumstances because variables are, variables are literally circumstances. That there are times that God is not a victim of your old age. That God is not subject to the sicknesses that bereave your body. That God operates in time, but he's so much outside of time. That God has declared the end from the beginning. That God is, that we went back to look at the history books to look at God's date of birth and nothing was found. That God simply is. That's what it's saying here. He's the father of life in whom there's no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Uh, there is uh, in theological circles that some commentators that think that when they say neither shadow of turning, that God was being compared to the sun itself. The sun is the sun day in and day out. But just think, the sun doesn't shine on the entire earth. Uh, in the same place at the same time. While the sun is aimed in our direction right now, on the other side of the world, the sun turns from it. The sun goes through seasons. The sun has to relent to storms sometimes. The sun has to relent to eclipses at times. But what is it saying that in him there's no neither shadow turning? That we have a God that's going to be the same no matter what comes, no matter what comes our way, what circumstance, what adverse situation comes this way, that God is going to be the same. And I'm still talking about the Father of Life. I, I heard Matthew Henry, a great Bible commentator, Matthew Henry said, he said that immutability is only a characteristic of the throne room. The ability to not change only resists in the chambers of the God that we serve. I don't care how much you like your boo. I don't care how much you like your mama. I don't care how much you like your daddy. That you're looking at a person that's subject to change. They're not going to be, no matter how much you want them to be, that how, you know how we all like to keep things the same, but I'm sorry, time on, in our mortal world won't let any of us stay the same. Your hair won't stay the same. Your body won't stay the same. Your uh, temperament won't stay the same. But, but we are beings that are subject to change. And everything that we know in our reality, our reality is stretched just trying to understand one that is not subject to change. We've all had friends that we thought were our ace boom cones or our best friends or our partners. And, and then when a, when a bad time or bad season came upon us that we couldn't find them nowhere around. We've all had someone who told us that we we lit up their lives and lit up that we're the light of their world. And seven months later, that some they're telling somebody else that we all have had situations where we have seen people change. But I'm still talking about the fall of light, and, and it says here that God is the only constant in our lives. He's the only thing that stays the same. And when you talk about a constant, what a constant means is that it just simply is. As a matter of fact, when we said Jehovah, it, 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 in some 
point, respect, we're basically saying God is. Uh, I, I was thinking of, of the psalmist in, in Psalm 46 and 1 when he said that God is our refuge. He is our, our place of safety. And he's our refuge and our strength, a very present help in a time of trouble. I'm telling you that even the Bible says that, uh, you know, it literally tells us that God is there for us in, in a very present help in a time of trouble. That we sing how everybody can be with us and be our aces when our pockets are fat and our credit is good and our jobs are good and our children are acting right and all of our utilities are on at the very same time. But it's in the fire of affliction that starts to separate people from us. But it's saying that God is our refuge and our strength of very present help that God is. That's what I'm telling you that when we're talking about the Father life, we're literally talking about someone that is going to be there in the night, night hour. He's going to be with you in the day. Uh, and he's literally going to keep you through the night. He's literally going to keep you through the storm. He's literally going to keep you through every adverse situation in your life. The scriptures declare that he that keepeth Israel, which is symbolic of the church, shall neither slumber nor sleep. That God actually never takes a day off from protecting his children, protecting those whom he loves. That God gets the perfect attendance award for standing up for those that are here. That he that works day and night, and actually he is not at work, but he has already declared the end from the beginning. That God's not working on your situation. God's already finished your situation and sat down. But literally it says that God literally is. And, and so many of us, we need someone that will be with us in our times of trouble. It also says, says here that it says that this text is basically saying that, that God is the author of all good. He's the source of all good. So don't say that God sent a bad situation for your way. It says every good and every perfect gift is from above. Many of the problems that we have, we have is we come from our own lust, uh, and the lust lead to sin. That some of the bad situations and bad problems in our lives are because.